Okay, what I'm going to show you is just a little group of exercises you can do and progress for problems like uh, tennis and golfers' elbow, lateral and major epicondylitis. Okay, it's kind of a redoing an old video I did many years ago called Hammer Pronation. There's nothing particularly wrong with that video, but with this, we just add a few bits on, a few progressions, a few different things you can try out, see how you get on. I think in the first video for the hammer explanation, I actually used a hammer, like a DIY hammer. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that really, nothing wrong with that at all. Just you need something on a stick with a bit of weight on the end. What I'm going to use for this one is just this 1.13 kilogram weight, okay? So I'm going to treat, well, I'm going to treat this forearm, okay? So it's a little bit generic overall treatment, but you know, it's not bad, nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to take the weight and I'm going to hold it at the base, okay? And then I can just take this arm, if I want, you know, and just give a little bit of support to the elbow. Then what I'm going to do, yeah, is I'm going to bring this all the way out to one side. And then I'm going to bring it up to the centre. And then I'm going to bring it all the way over to the other side. And then I'm going to continue in that fashion. Okay, you know, and if I, I would do this, you know, 10 to 12 times initially, maybe sets of three, 10 to 12. But what we're looking for, you know, if you have an issue, we're looking for a point of bind, a point of pain, you know, almost like a feeling for that, that stretch, which is about to turn into pain. This is how, this is how I want you to picture it. Okay, so if you've got an issue in one of these muscles, so here's a muscle, right? And there's its fibers. And then you've had a, a tear let's say so there's a rupture in the muscle well, the muscle doesn't grow back like that it doesn't grow back straight it grows back like that like imagine like a almost a really bad gains and noughts and crosses so what we want to do is stress those fibers stress them to try and pull them back straight what we don't want to do is go too hard and re-rupture so we're back to that square one and away we go again so the way we do that so say we're coming over yeah, so now we're pronating the forearm. And just there, I start to feel it, just there. What I do is two seconds, just on the edge of it, and then I'll come away. Yeah. Go over, and then when I come back, nice and slow, nice and controlled, go to that point, just feel it, two, and then back, and then over. Okay. And then when I can do, when I can go on, not that fast. When I can do this, nice and controlled, 10 to 12 times, sets of three. You know, we want to start, how do, we, how do we progress it? Well, we can progress it by making a, a larger weight. So this is now 2.27, okay? Dif difficulty with this is, you know, it's quite bulbous at the bottom. It's quite, it's quite hard to, to grip, but then what are we doing? We're improving our grip strength. So is that a bad thing? I don't know, probably not. Yeah, and we can go over, it's when you come over here, because now your thumb is taking all the weight. Yeah, and we can progress in that way. So that's not bad. And then what else could we do? Well, we then, well, we could do a straight arm. Yeah, have our arm nice and straight out to the front. And then we'll go over, and it'll feel different with a straight arm to a bent arm. Yeah. And then increase the weight again. I mean, if you see me in clinic, I would have maybe given you something more specific to you, or maybe I'd have said, go through this video, have a go, see how it goes. It's all about playing with stuff and see how it goes. So you could do a straight arm with um, a larger weight again, or you can use one of these, it's quite good. Um, if you've been to see me, you will definitely, definitely have a whole array of these things, okay? What you can do with this one now, you can stand. I've got it under my foot, so I'm just standing, stepping on it. I bring my arm up to the front, nice and straight. And I've looped it over the back of my fingers and then dropping off under the thumb. And then from here, I'm just turning my hand in. And that will be different again. Okay. So I'm sort of only coming to the thumb up on this one, just past, just so the thumb's just at sort of two o'clock or half past one and then coming over yeah and then what you can do is have the band on the inside of the hand okay and now turn the thumb away so 
try and keep the arms straight and then come back. And this time you're coming to sort of like 11 ish, and then all the way around as far as you can go. You can increase this with the weight of the band, you or just you know, step, give yourself less slack so you've got more of a torque to fight, yeah, or increase the strength of the band. You can always give you heavier bands if you ask. Uh, and build it up that way, yeah. But remember, you go in, feel that, feel that, um, the edge of that pain, edge of that pain, one, two, and then come back out of it. Now, on, the, on, this, on this, these ones, you know, with the band tone out, always unlock. That's the way I think of it, unlocking. So you come back to neutral. So we've gone that way, you come to neutral. Unlock by going just over the other side and then go around. Yeah. Don't know why I call it unlocking, but it makes sense to me. And then turn it away that way. When you come back, don't go to neutral, unlock and then go around. It's almost like you, you know, contracting, contracting, then just unlock it and then let it go. And you, it makes a difference. It does. Um, that's it. That's how, you know, that's a few different progressions, few different things. Start treating this for one thing. There's a, I'm sure there is a taping technique around in my videos as well somewhere. If not, I'll redo that. Um, yeah.